What if leopard seals were introduced in the Arctic? Imagine a giant spotted sea wolf slicing through icy water where polar bears roam. An Antarctic leopard seal suddenly dropped into the Arctic. What would happen? Could this stealthy finned predator hold its own on someone else's turf? Or would it end up as dinner for a polar bear? Picture this unexpected guest. A wickedly sharp-toothed hunter popping out beneath the Arctic ice, surprising walruses, belugas, narwhals, and even grizzled old polar bears. It sounds like a wild sci-fi plot, but today we ask a serious question. How would the Arctic ecosystem react if we tossed in a new top predator from the south? This isn't just about one animal meeting another. It's a domino effect through the food web. Let's begin. The topic of today's video was given by at Sid Walker 4194, who has the comment with the most likes. So your idea could be the topic for our next videos. We'll continue the series and the comment with the most likes on this video will be the topic for one of the next videos. Thanks. Where leopard seals belong. First, let's meet the leopard seal. This isn't a tiger in a seal suit, but it is big and fierce. Leopard seals, Hydrurga leptonix, live only around Antarctica, circling the frozen continent on the pack ice. They're huge. Males average around 2.8 meters long and 320 kilograms, while females can grow over 3 meters and 370 to 500 kilograms roughly the size of a compact car with fins. Their long flippers and streamlined bodies make them speedy swimmers. They have giant jaws filled with pointy teeth and a second set of lobed molars for filtering tiny prey. In short, these seals are built for hunting. Leopard seals are solitary, stealthy ambush predators. They lurk under ice ledges or just below the surface, waiting for unsuspecting prey to swim by. They eat almost anything that moves in the Southern Ocean. Their menu includes penguins, fish, squid, krill, and even pups of other seals like crab eater, weddell, or fur seals. When hunting, they will sneak up on a penguin underwater and thrash it against the ice until it's easy to tear apart. Because they eat such a wide range of creatures, they're true apex predators in Antarctica. Except for orcas. Leopard seals are so good at predation that they can drastically change their ecosystem. Who rules the Arctic? Now switch gears to the north. The Arctic is its own frozen kingdom with a very different cast of characters. The polar ice here is the stage for creatures like polar bears, walruses, narwhals, beluga whales, and lots of seals. In fact, many Arctic animals depend on the ice for survival. Polar bears, walruses, and seals all use it as their platform for resting, breeding, and hunting. Lose the ice, and their world changes completely. At the top of this chilly food web on land and ice stands the polar bear. These mighty bears can weigh over 500 kilograms, up to 1,100 pounds, and are perfectly adapted to life on the ice. Polar bears are carnivores, specialized for seals. They spend most of their lives waiting at seal breathing holes or stalking seal dens. Their favorite meal is the ringed seal, but they'll also hunt bearded seals. In fact, polar bears have evolved to prey almost exclusively on ringed and bearded seals. What about whales and seals? Arctic seas are full of seals too. Ringed seals are the smallest and most numerous, making them polar bear snacks. There are also larger seals like bearded, harp, and hooded seals. These seals often haul out on ice floes or rest at breathing holes where a waiting bear or nearby walrus might snatch them. Speaking of walruses, these are the tusked giants of the north. Adult walruses can weigh a ton or more, so only very bold polar bears even try to hunt them. And then there are the whales and dolphins. The Arctic is home to beluga whales and narwhals, which are toothed whales that eat fish and tiny crustaceans. But even larger animals have a chance against them. Killer whales patrol Arctic waters too. 
Orcas are ocean-going apex predators, literally the top of the marine food chain. They travel in family pods and can hunt fish, seals, and even other whales. In the Arctic, hungry orcas have been known to herd belugas or narwhals into pockets of open water and pick them off. In short, in the Arctic, the food web is led by polar bears on the ice and orcas in the sea, with walruses, seals, and smaller whales filling in the middle. It's a tough neighborhood, perfectly balanced for the native species that evolved here. First Contact Now let's play nature's mad scientist and drop a few leopard seals into the Arctic ice. Perhaps we place one on the ice edge off northern Canada or Greenland. Our new leopard seal dives into the frigid water. It's still just as big and fast as ever, but now the scenery is different. There are no penguins anywhere, only Arctic seal species and fish. The water holds some comforts. There are plenty of fish, for example, an abundance of small fish like Arctic cod, which form a key part of the Arctic food chain. Even tiny plankton grazers here could feed a filter feeder, and leopard seals have those sieve-like teeth to strain krill. The real question is seals. In Antarctica, it had crab-eater seals and fur seal pups to eat, but in the Arctic, the closest equivalents are ringed and bearded seals. A new leopard seal might try hunting ringed seal pups or even adult ringed seals in open water. It might also target bearded seals. Though those are bigger, the leopard is no lightweight. The leopard has never met these exact species, but a hungry predator has a good chance to learn quickly. Native Arctic seals would be alarmed, though. Imagine a ringed seal peeking out of its ice hole and seeing this strange spotted intruder eyeing it from below. Without penguins as breakfast, the leopard would have to adapt its hunting style. It might wait at an ice edge, similar to polar bear hunting, or it might chase fish schools instead, which would pit it against orcas and walruses for the catch. There could be territory fights. A leopard seal might try to keep a nice part of ice free of other predators. However, one obvious challenge is breeding. Leopard seals give birth in the Antarctic spring, about November, on pack ice. In the Arctic, spring comes six months opposite. Our lone leopard seal might not even find a mate, so no pups would be born. But if we're hypothetically dropping in a breeding pair or a small group, they might attempt to breed in the wrong season. It's a big calendar mix-up. Temperature-wise, the Arctic is not much kinder. The water is still near freezing, and the ice can be just as thick. In fact, Antarctica can even be colder on land, so the leopard seal is probably comfortable swimming in Arctic waters. The main difference is that Arctic ice pack is broken and shifting. Not a huge problem for a strong swimmer like our leopard seal. Predator meets Predator Now the big players notice something new in the pond. A polar bear might spot the strange leopard seal frolicking near a breathing hole. Polar bears are curious and opportunistic. If a bear wades into the water and clamps into a leopard seal, who would win? We can only speculate, but consider this. A full-grown leopard seal is the size of a small polar bear. If a bear tried to bite it, the seal's thick skin and muscle, and maybe a lunge of its head, would be tough to overcome. It might end badly for both. A bear could end up with a chest full of teeth, and a seal could be bitten or clawed. We don't have real-life records of bear versus leopard seal fights, but they both put up a fight. One thing's for sure, polar bears do eat strange things if they can catch them. Under the ocean surface, things could get icy between predators. Orcas, killer whales, might spy our leopard seal and think, New menu item. Orcas already prey on all sorts of seals and even leopard seals in Antarctica. They use teamwork and waves to knock seals off ice flows. In Arctic waters, a curious orca pod could easily attack a lone leopard seal. Then there's competition. Our leopard seal is eyeing the same meals as the locals. If it goes after ringed seals or Arctic cod, 
Polar bears and other seals might find less food. Orcas might see another mouth in the water eating fish or krill that they count on. Imagine polar bears getting grumpy when fish runs seem smaller, or arctic seals feeling the pressure of one more hunter. Could they adapt long term? If our leopard seals survived first contact, could they become permanent arctic residents? Physically, they might manage. Leopard seals are built for cold water, and arctic waters, while a bit warmer in some spots, are still below freezing. They already see months of winter darkness in Antarctica, and the Arctic has the same polar night phenomenon in its winter, so the day-night cycle wouldn't be totally new to them. In fact, these seals are strong swimmers and can probably migrate under the ice as far as needed. One big hurdle is breeding. Leopard seals give birth on Antarctic ice around November after a long pregnancy. In the Arctic, spring comes around April. Leopard seals are pretty flexible eaters. A Baylor University study found that while each seal tends to specialize in certain prey, some can switch diets when needed. A few leopard seals could probably survive for a while by eating whatever is available, but thriving long-term is doubtful without a big population and some luck adapting their breeding and hunting. What happens to the ecosystem? Okay, say a small number of leopard seals stick around. What then? Even a few new top predators can shake things up dramatically. First, think of the prey. Leopard seals would hunt arctic seals and fish. If they eat a lot of ringed or bearded seals, those populations could drop sharply. If similar pressure hit arctic seals, polar bears would find themselves with fewer snacks. Polar bears might then have to hunt more walrus calves or scavenge whale carcasses, stretching the food web. Arctic cod and other fish might also take a hit. Those small fish are eaten by ring seals and belugas. If a new predator gobbles a chunk of the cod too, it could ripple up the food chain. Now consider the native predators. Polar bears could become hungrier and start taking riskier shots at walrus or even human settlements. Orcas might find themselves competing with leopard seals for larger prey. In a worst-case scenario, if leopard seals manage to reproduce and grow in number, they could displace some arctic seals from their favorite spots. A subtle shift like this can cause a catastrophic cascade. Why it shouldn't happen? Put simply, arctic ecosystems aren't ready for this. There's no upside to adding a big meat eater. The risk of collapse is too high, and once it starts, you can't reverse evolution overnight. Real biologists would cringe at the idea. Even ecology class teaches that invasive predators can trigger deadly cascades. We've learned from nature that good intentions don't count. Past attempts to control nature have almost always backfired spectacularly. The Arctic, fragile and precious, is not a laboratory for playing God. As one conservationist put it, we have a unique opportunity not to repeat others' mistakes. Introducing a leopard seal would be opening Pandora's box in a frozen kingdom. The Arctic has its own rhythm, one set by countless generations of adaptation. It's the result of millennia of isolation and balance. Sneaking an Antarctic apex predator into this dance might seem small, just one or two animals. But nature doesn't think small. Even a single new predator can throw everything out of sync. In this hypothetical tale, introducing a leopard seal to the north may sound adventurous, but in reality, it would be a gamble with nature's harmony.